Looking to jazz up your stream with something like this? Or maybe something like this? Or maybe you just want a smooth stream with no stuttering or lag or frame drops. Not to worry, friends, I got you covered. This is DIY in 5. Hey everyone, welcome to DIY in 5. I'm your host, Trisha Hirschberger, and today I'm going to give you a crash bang course in streaming software, like OBS, XSplit, Shadowplay, Stream Elements, and Streamlabs. From broadcasting software options to streaming apps and all the options in between. If live streaming to Twitch or YouTube is your goal, and honestly, it's so much fun, I don't know why it wouldn't be, I think you'll be ready to jump right in once you realize how simple the software side of it can be. Let's break it down. When it comes to broadcasting software, there are a range of options out there at various price points, so we'll go over some of the most common. Open Broadcaster Software, or OBS, is the go-to choice for the budget conscious, since it's absolutely free and works on Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's very reliable and doesn't take up a lot of processing power to run, and because it's open source, there are constantly new plugins being released, meaning you have tons of customization options. The downside to being open source means there's no real customer support, and it is a bit difficult to navigate for streaming beginners. That being said, I learned on OBS and can personally vouch for how awesome it is. Multiple scenes, source transitions, media types, the sky's the limit. Another popular streaming software is XSplit. XSplit has two versions, Broadcaster and Gamecaster, with Gamecaster being more basic and easier to use than Broadcaster, but giving you less options overall. Both XSplit versions are beginner friendly with a setup wizard button that will figure out the optimal settings for your stream. And when you're just starting out, that thing can be a lifesaver. They have great support and the free version will let you stream up to 720p without a watermark. The paid version is $60 annually, removes the watermark on higher res streams, and adds features like stream delay, streaming to multiple services at once, and more. In addition to scenes, sources, transitions, and importing media, they also have a new VCAM feature that will attempt to key out your webcam background, mimicking a green screen, but using software AI. In my testing, it's very hit or miss, but feel free to try it out because VCAM is totally free. The last broadcasting software we'll mention is NVIDIA Shadowplay, which comes bundled with NVIDIA's GeForce graphics cards. Shadowplay encodes using your GPU instead of your CPU, which can drastically help your stream quality. Shadowplay itself doesn't offer any overlays or even scenes with multiple sources, i.e. a webcam in the corner of your full screen gameplay. There is a way to use Shadowplay with OBS, however, using the NVENC encoder from NVIDIA, it takes a little more know-how, but it is a good option if you already have an NVIDIA graphics card. Now let's move on to apps that work alongside your software, and there are many. These are what really personalize your streams, from animated tip jars to loyalty point programs to custom on-screen notifications, and can be a huge factor in earning income from streaming, taking you from hobbyist to professional. Stream Elements and Stream Labs are probably the two most common, and they are both completely free. Each have their diehard fan base, but will offer you monetization and personalization features out the wazoo. In addition to those that I listed above, you can do custom merchandise, on stream music requests, animated overlays, and face masks. The list goes on and on. Streamlabs even has an integration with OBS called Streamlabs OBS, or SLOBS, where you get all the features of Streamlabs right in your broadcasting software. Just like regular OBS, it is open source, free, and has tons of features, plus it uses less screen real estate and processing power. The downside to slobs is that it's still new and still beta-ish, so you may run into some bugs or hardware incompatibility. As you can see, streaming software is pretty readily available for low to no cost. So what are you waiting for? If you already stream regularly, which of these programs do you use? Let us know in the comments. I personally use XSplit to stream to Twitch and OBS to stream to YouTube with all of my alerts and fun features set up through Streamlabs. I only haven't made the switch to slobs because it's not compatible with my current capture card, but I do need to play around with it more. Make sure to check out our previous video on our streaming hardware recommendations. Okay everyone, happy streaming and I'll see you next time with more DIY in 5.